Oh, hi there, kids. So, uh, we're going to talk about Rolle's theorems. It's really exciting stuff. Um, so, we have this problem here, and let me go over the basic, let me give you a basic overview of Rolle's theorem. So, basically, as long as, by the way, it's a subset of MVT, but you've got a line, or a, well, you've got a function, and this function has to be continuous on the closed interval A to B. F of A, so the Y value at A, has to be equal to f of b, the y value of b. It also has to be differentiable on a to b. So anything less than a straight line, so a linear function, will not work. But, and that's only because the, the der derivative of a linear function is zero. But, um, so we have this, this is an example. So you see how we have f of a and f of b, and they're the same thing, which means that there are only two possibilities, either one, there's a curve of some sort which leads back to this point or there's a line. Either way, there is a point where, um, where you, can, well, you can find a value of c and that will be the derivative of the tangent line. Um, or that will be the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line. Uh, anyways, so for this problem, we're looking for the value, possibly values, of c. Um, so we have the equation f of x equals sine x um, on the closed interval 0 to 2 pi. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, well we have these conditions, f of x is continuous on 0 to 2 pi, f of x is differentiable on 0 to 2 pi, that's an open interval though, and so what we're going to do is we're going to test if f of 0 equals f of 2 pi. Um, so if f of 0 equals f of 2 pi, which it does, um, then we can go here, we can take the derivative of the function, remember the function is sine x, that's going to be, the derivative of that function is going to be cosine x. Then we're going to set that cosine x equal to 0, and we're going to get these two values, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Um, that Those are the values of c that fulfill this. Oh, and this is a spider. All right, so this is the average value problem, and it's find the average value of g of x on the closed interval 0 to 5. And what makes this problem different than a normal average value theorem is that there is a, a piecewise function. So this is a regular setup for finding the average value. We're going to need to split it up into two separate parts because there's two different equations between 0 and 5. So you split it up from the parameters of each, so 0 to 3 for the first part and 3 to 5 for the second one. And uh, we're not going to go through all the work, but basically you find the derivative for each separate, or find the integral for each separate one. It goes like this. And then once you plug in the various things and add these parts together, it's going to come out to 20 thirds. And that's when you bring back the original average value, multiply it by 20 thirds, and you get your answer. Okay. So we're going to uh, talk about EVT. Um, the problem says locate absolute max on closed interval. Uh, or on the closed interval, 0 uh, to 1 sixth of f of x equals cosine of pi x. Um, so we're going to start off by finding the derivative, which is going to be negative sine pi x times pi, because as you know, the derivative of a cosine function is negative sine u times u prime. Um, and then we're going to set it equal to 0, and we're going to find the critical points. So that's what all of this is. So then from there, we're going to draw, we're going to figure out which of these, because remember we're on a closed interval, we're going to figure out which of these points are outside of the closed interval if there are any. So it turns out that pi and 2 pi are both outside of 1 sixth by a pretty long shot. Um, so the second step of this is to set what uh, critical value we do have, which is zero. So the reason we can use zero is it says on the closed interval, so zero is an actual point. If it said on the open interval, which it probably wouldn't, we couldn't use zero, but we can. So we set zero and then one six because according to EVT, you can have maxes and mins on a closed interval at the um, at the close or at the points um, that are defined by the interval. So that means we can have two possible maxes or mins. Um, we have f of 0 and f of 1, 6. You plug these in, so cosine of, um, you plug these into the original function, mind you. 
because if you plug it into the derivative, you're going to get the slope, which is not what we're looking for. We're looking for y values from the original function. Um, you plug in 0, and you're going to get uh, cosine of 0, which is 1. Um, you plug in cosine of pi over 6, uh, which is, remember, it's cosine pi x, so cosine times uh, pi uh, times 1 6 is going to be cosine pi over 6, and you're going to get uh, root 3 over 2. Um, so root 3 over 2 is less than 1, uh, so f of 0 is the absolute max, so the absolute max for this equation on the given interval, the closed given interval of 0 to 1 6 is at 0, x equals 0.